Okay, so this is Kimi K2, which is probably the deep seek moment of agentic coding. So it's a humongous one trillion parameter model, which is state of the art for open weight coding models. And in fact, is very close to some of the closed source proprietary models. And I suspect it's probably a reason of why open AI had to delay their open source model release. More on that later in the video. Now it's open weight, so the weights are available on Hugging Face, but you probably will not be able to run this locally because as I said, it's a humongous one trillion parameter model with 32 billion active parameters for any query. Now it has sparse 384 experts with a context length of 128,000 tokens. But for me personally, the most important bit is how this thing was trained and what type of training loss we are looking at. This plot is just beautiful. I'll explain that later in the video. So the model can be used on Kimi.com for free, but in case if you don't want to send your data to China, the model is already up on a number of different providers and you can use it on open router, which is just an awesome thing with these open weight models. So from some of my early tests, it seems to be a very capable agentic coding model. Now, whether it's on par with something like Cloud4 or Sonnet4, we have yet to see that, but it's definitely a very capable model. And you can use it within Cloud Code because the pricing is so good, you get a lot of value for what you're going to be paying. Okay, so let's first look at some of the benchmarks and then we're going to talk about why this release is so significant, in my opinion. They have specifically trained a coding model so it's not a general purpose model. And this is a trend that we have been seeing for quite a while. Companies are starting to release code specific model. Now it's a mixture of expert or MOE, but this is not a reasoning model, which is pretty awesome because you need speed for coding tasks. And reasoning models usually generate reasoning tokens before the actual code generation. And the coding capabilities of this model are probably the best when it comes to open weight models. And also I think it closes the gap on some of the proprietary models. So if you look at Sweep Bench Verified, it gets an incredible score of 66% for a single attempt. For multi-attempt, it gets to 72%. Now they're comparing it with DeepSeq 3, unfortunately not the latest version, which is 3.1, but even with this one, the gap is almost double of what DeepSeq V3 was able to achieve. It's definitely surpasses GPT 4.1. And this is probably the category in which you want to put this model, given that GPT 4.1 is also a good specific model. Now, if you look at it for a single attempt, Cloud Opus without thinking, you get about 73%, right? So multiple attempts of K2 kind of closes that gap but Cloud4 opuses without thinking. And I think the reason they are comparing it with the non-reasoning version of Opus4 because this model itself is non-reasoning. Now, for some of the other benchmarks, it's state of the art. So if you look at Live Code Bench V6, it surpasses Cloud4 opus, which is an incredible feat. But I think the most important benchmarks to look at is the tool usage or agentic capabilities because it's specifically RL for tool usage. We're going to look at some of the technical details, but it's definitely state of the art in open weight category and still closes the gap with Cloud4 Opus. Now in real world code tests, is it better than Cloud4 Opus or close to it? We don't know yet. I think we're going to get a sense in a few days. Now here are a few examples that they have shared. I'm going to put a link to this so you can actually read through some of these, but the interesting bits are that it's able to use multiple different tools within a single session. This is what we have seen from some of these reasoning models that the reasoning models are able to use multiple tools within their chain of thought. But this non-reasoning model has the ability to use multiple different agentic tools. And it all comes down to how this model was trained. So they were specifically focusing on two different aspects. One is large scale uh, agentic data synthesis. And the second part is general reinforcement learning. Now it seems like they did reinforcement learning directly on the tool usage or agentic capabilities, 
rather than mathematics and coding, which is usually how people do it. And for that, they had to generate large synthetic data. And they also say, say that they used specifically real world MCPs, also some synthetic ones, right? So we would expect that this model is going to be really good at tool usage or for agentic tasks. Now let's talk about training this model because I think that's the most important insight from this release. Pre-training is a crucial foundation of agentic intelligence. Now they refer to Ilya Siskor's observation, human data is finite fossil fuel and its growth is lagging far behind the pace of compute. This makes token efficiency during pre-training a new critical coefficient in the AI scaling laws. So how much you can learn from a single token is now very critical. And this is a 1 trillion parameter model. They used 15 trillion tokens to train it using this new optimizer called Mooncleep. So I think there were some doubts about whether this new optimizer can scale to, let's say, 1 trillion tokens or 15 trillion tokens for that matter. But they have showed that it actually does scale. Okay, so here's a tweet from Quan Quan Gu, who is a professor at UCLA. So he's comparing the token per parameter of K2 with some of the LAMA models. So he says, this explains why LAMA4 failed. The token per parameter is way off. You can't defy scaling laws and expect miracles. Now, if you look at LAMA4 Maverick, which is this 400 parameter or 400 billion parameter model, this is a humongous token dens density of almost 1700 tokens per parameter. Now, on the other hand, Lama 4 Behemoth, which is a two trillion parameter model, has a relatively small token density or tokens per parameter of only one of four, right? Now, DeepSeq V3, as well as this new Kimi2 model have very similar token per parameter density. Now, to understand this, here's what the original Chinchela paper recommended. So they recommend tokens parameter of about 20 to 21 for the initial pre-training. But we are talking about dense models here, not MOEs. Now, Lama went extreme overtraining for the smaller Maverick model and seems like extreme undertraining for the Behemoth model. And then this loss versus training tokens. So you would expect a lot of spikes if you're doing huge training runs with, let's say, trillions of tokens. But it seems like this new optimizer is actually very stable, especially after around 11 trillion tokens, you see a smooth degradation and loss, which is probably coming from some annealing happening here. In terms of the architecture, it's using an architecture very similar to DeepSeq V3, which kind of also shows you the importance of open source because companies and researchers can learn a lot from each other. And we're seeing a lot of this open collaboration uh, from models and companies coming out of China. Unfortunately, the Western companies are a lot more closed off now. Now, if you want to try the model, you can just go to Kimi.com and just make an account and you can test the model for free. So here is one example of a SaaS landing page that I asked it to create. So this was one shot and it does look a lot more professional depending on the prompt for sure, but it's very different than some of the outputs that I have seen from other models. Usually they just look like a replica of each other. Now this release seems to be pretty significant because uh, OpenAI just delayed their own open weight model release. So here's Sam Altman. He said, we plan to launch our open weight model next week. We are delaying it. We need time to run additional safety tests and review high risk areas. We are not yet sure how long it will take us. While we trust the community will build great things on this model, once weights are out, they can't be pulled back. And this is new for us and want to get it right. Sorry to be the bearer of the bad news. We are working super hard. No, totally understandable. When DeepSeek was released, there were a number of different models that got delayed as well. Although the closed source models are not really doing great at safety either. So you probably saw the news about Grok 3 going all crazy. And now even with Grok 4, it has its own issues. So if you ask any controversial question, then it goes and looks at what Elon Musk thinks about that specific topic for certain topic and forms its opinions based on that. 
at least for open weight models, the user themselves can control these things, which is much better than I think these companies putting or pushing their own ethics and agenda on the users. Now, in terms of testing the model, so I had a couple of quick tests with it. So here's one testing it on 20 bouncing balls. It seems like they have definitely trained it for tasks like these. Now, if you look here, it follows the prompt pretty closely. However, if you look at it in the beginning, some of the balls actually drop off of the heptagon. But other than that, this is probably one of the best output that I have seen apart from the cloud models. And also the model has access to web search, so you can use internet with it. And it's probably one of the cleanest UI from a Chinese company, apart from the Quen UI, which is also pretty beautiful. Now, the model is not perfect. So for example, in some cases it completely fails. So I asked it to create an animation of a crowd of people walking to form Hello World, right? It's not able to do that at all. I think this was an earlier version in which I asked it to write, hello, I'm Croc. The prompt itself was inspired from one of the posts that I saw somewhere on X. Now it does, I think, generate something, but the canvas is not long enough to actually see what it did. But in general, for UIs, it's definitely much better than some of the other offerings. Okay, so while I was rec recording this video, a news dropped that OpenAI's OneSurf deal is off and WinSurf CEO is going to Google. So that was a shocker to everyone. Now, one last thing about the license. So this is supposed to be modified MIT license where they actually want people to do marketing, which is completely understandable, right? So here's what they say. Our only modification part is that if the software or any derivative works thereof is used for any purpose of your commercial products or services that have more than 100 million active monthly user or more than 20 million US dollars are equivalent in other currencies in monthly revenue, you should predominantly display Kimi K2 on user interfaces of such products or services. Now, this kind of goes against open licenses. However, it's a, a modified MIT license and it's still much better than something like the original Llama or even the Quinn licenses. So I personally don't really see a big issue with this because these models are not open source models. They are open weight models. So by default, we are actually not working with completely open source things that you can modify in any shape or form that you want. Anyways, do check out Kimi or Open Router if you want to play around with the model. I'm going to do some more testing and then I'll be able to give you informed opinion on how good this model actually is. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.